A Tale from the Care Bears, The Care Bears Battle the Freeze Machine. Story by Arthur S. Rosenblatt. Pictures by Joe Ewers. Are you ready? Here we go. Hello, we're the Care Bears. We're a special group of colorful, round, snuggly little bears whose job it is to help you understand your own feelings and share them with others. As you can see, we have special pictures on our tummies, and those pictures tell you the special job that each of us loves to do. I'm Tenderheart Bear, and it's my job to help people reach out to each other. I say that love is a warm, fuzzy feeling, so go ahead and share it. I'm Cheer Bear, and if you're sad or not feeling well, I'll, I'll slide down a rainbow and make you feel better. Smile! I'm Funshine Bear, so there's a great big happy sun on my tummy to remind you to laugh and look at the lighter side of things. You're in luck, cause it's me, Good Luck Bear. That's why I'm wearing a four-leaf clover. Don't count the number of birthdays, count how happy you feel. I'm Birthday Bear, and I'll make your birthdays the best ever. I'm Wish Bear, and if you wish on my star, Maybe your special wish will come true. Your special dream, I mean. If you're ever feeling lonely, just call on me, Friend Bear. See, I've got a daisy for you and a daisy for me. Grrr. I'm Grumpy Bear. There's a cloud on my tummy to show that I can take the grouchies away so you can be happy again. I'm Love a Lot Bear. I have two hearts on my tummy. One is for you, the other is for someone you love. <sighs> it's my job to bring you sweet dreams. <sighs> I'm Bedtime Bear, and right now, I'm a bit sleepy. <sighs> Are you sleepy too? <sighs> Now that you know all of us, we hope that you'll have a special place in your heart for us in your heart, just like we do for you. With love from all of us, the Care Bears. It was a typical day in the land of Carolot. Baby Hugs was chasing a floating bumblebee. Baby Tugs was busy licking honey off his paw. When he saw Hugs approach the edge of the cloud, he shouted, I'll save you, baby Hugs. In his hurry, baby Tugs tripped and went sliding toward the edge of the cloud himself. Uh-oh. Luckily, Graham's bear was nearby, and she caught both baby bears at once. Now you two rascals just settle yourselves down, she warned. You're not grown-up Care Bears yet, you know. But I will be soon answered Baby Tugs as he tried to stand up taller. <laughs> Aw, Tugs, that's just like him. He's really desperate to be a grown-up Care Bear. <laughs> he just can't wait to grow up so that he can join the bigger Care Bears on their missions. <laughs> Kids these days. <laughs> on a nearby cloud... Tenderheart Bear was turning his telescope toward the town below. Do you see anyone who needs help? Wish Bear asked. I think I'm about to, Tenderheart Bear said. Sure enough, trouble was beginning outside the hardware store. A big, tough boy had gathered a crowd, had gathered a group around him. Hey, Lumpy. What are you going to do? Asked one of the other boys. Just wait and see, the big boy answered. The door opened and a small boy stepped outside. He was carrying a big bag full of hardware. Here's how we get brainy boy Paul, Lumpy said as he shoved his bat between Paul's feet. Paul tripped. The bag fell to the ground and out spilled a collection of nuts and bolts, wire and springs. Well, gee, that wasn't very nice, now was it? Nope, nope, nope. 
Pa looked at the bat and said, You did that on purpose. Why are you always picking on me? Because you're an oddball, and we don't like oddballs, answered Lumpy. Then he and the others laughed and ran off to the playground. I'll get even with you. You just wait and see, shouted Paul after them. From a nearby alleyway, an odd-looking man had watched what had happened at the hardware store. It was the mad scientist, Professor Coldheart. Sitting on his ice cycle, he smiled coldly. Hee hee hee, I love to see kids playing mean tricks. Too bad I can't stay to see more, but I have bigger plans. In Carolot, Tenderheart Bear said, I think Paul needs some Care Bear care before things get out of hand, said Wish Bear. Grumpy Bear jumped up and said, Grr, if that cold heart is around, Paul needs some help right now. Cheer Bear shouted, Okay, Care Bears, into your cloud cars and rainbow racers. Well, in the cartoons, they are called rainbow rollers. Anyway... As the Care Bears started to take off, Baby Tugs jumped into the back of Tenderheart's cloud car. Come on, Hugs. This is our chance to go on a Care Bear adventure. None of the other Care Bears saw them as he pulled Hugs into the car, and away they went. As the Care Bears sped to Earth, Coldheart sped off to his hidden mansion where he was building his careless ray contraption. Frostbite, he shouted. Come here now. Into the laboratory walked his assistant, who could not seem to stop shivering. Is the machine fixed? demanded Coldheart. It's all ready, answered Frostbite. Good, said Coldheart. Now we can numb the kitty's spirits and freeze their little hearts. Start the contraption. Frostbite pressed a button. There was a clanging, a banging, a pinging, and a ringing. And then a big explosion. Coldheart screamed, You've ruined my careless ray contraption, you fool! He stamped his feet and glared at Frostbite. Then suddenly, he began to smile. Wait a minute. I have a wonderful cold-hearted idea. That boy Paul knows a lot about machines. He could probably fix my contraption. Find him, Frostbite, and bring him here. Paul was still feeling bad as he walked by the playground. He hated it when the other kids called him Oddball. He wanted to have other kids like him. He swore that he'd make that lumpy pay for what he had done. Over his shoulder, he heard a voice say, You won't make any friends with that look on your face. Paul looked and saw all the Care Bears. Who are you? he asked. We're the Care Bears, Tenderheart answered. We've come to be your friends. Paul sighed. <sighs> I don't have any friends. Anyone would be your friend if you just show that you care, said Friend Bear. <laughs> She's not wrong there. Nope, she isn't. Yes, agreed Funshine, and you shouldn't strike out in anger no matter what Lumpy did to you. In fact, but Frostbite interrupted this conversation by poking his head around a tree and whispering to Paul, Never mind what they say, just watch this. Over in the playground, Lumpy was waiting for a pitch. As the ball came toward him, Frostbite whistled, <whistles> and the bat turned into a giant icicle. When the ball hit it, the bat shattered. Paul and Frostbite almost fell over laughing. That's n nothing, said Frostbite. Let's go and have some real fun. As they started to leave, Tenderheart Bear called out to Paul, What about making friends? It's too late, said Paul. 
It's never too late if you care enough, shouted all the Care Bears. But Paul was already gone. Good luck, Bear spoke up. This is really serious. This calls for a Care Bear conference. They climbed back into their cars, but Baby Hugs and Baby Tugs, who had gotten out to see if they could help, were too slow and the cloud cars left without them. They watched helplessly as the others disappeared. Oh, Tugs, what will we do now? asked Tugs. Back at the conference in Carolot, the Care Bears decided that it wasn't enough to tell Paul that he should try to reach out and make friends. We have to show him that he can make friends for himself, said Friend Bear. Just then, Graham's Bear rushed in. Hugs and tugs are lost, she said. I think they may have gone off with you, but they didn't come back. We'd better find them right away, said Grumpy Bear as they all started to leave. Let's go back to where we last saw Paul. Maybe they are still there. Let's hope so, Grumpy. Let's hope so. But while the Care Bears were in care a lot, Professor Coldheart had spied the two deserted baby bears. It looks like hunting season on Fuzzy Wuzzies has just begun, he cackled. Holding on to each other, the baby bears tried not to be afraid. Baby Tug said bravely, I'm not afraid of anything. May I'm not scared of anything. Professor Coldheart jumped out of the bushes. You're not, he screeched. We'll see about that. <laughs> Before they could run, Professor Coldheart snatched up the two baby bears and popped them into a sack. Now let's see how cold-hearted I can be, he muttered as he dragged the sack toward his mansion. When Professor Coldheart finally arrived at his destination, he found Frostbite showing Paul the careless ray contraption. Do you think you can fix it? It will help you get back at that big bully and all the others. You bet, said Paul. Coldheart added, to make it work best, you have to make the ray bounce off that bell in the tower before it hits its victims. Could you climb up and open the shutters a bit wider? Paul agreed to try. He soon fixed the careless ray contraption and, and then he ran to the tower. He climbed higher and higher. Then suddenly a rung on the ladder broke. Paul lost his balance and was barely able to hold on. Oh dear, hang on Paul. The Care Bears had just traced Coldheart's path as far as the tower when they heard when they heard somebody calling, Help! Somebody help me! I'm up here! You're going to need some luck, said Good Luck Bear as he floated up toward Paul and handed him a four-leaf clover. Paul caught the four-leaf clover and it seemed to pull him up to the tower to safety. He reached the shutters and flipped them open. Wish Bear whispered, I wish Paul hadn't done that, and I wish he were on the ground. There was a puff of smoke, and Paul stood before them. Oh, it's you, Paul sneered. Don't try to tell me about friendship. Don't you understand that you just helped me get even with everybody? And with that, he ran back to Coldheart. Bursting into Professor Coldheart's laboratory, Paul shouted, I did it! Now tell me, what are you going to do, it, do to Lumpy and... Paul stopped, speechless. In front of him was a huge block of ice with baby hugs and baby tugs frozen inside. Coldheart cracked a smile. Now that my contraption is working, I'm going to do something like that to every boy and girl in town. When Paul, saw what, when Paul saw what he had helped Professor Coldheart to do, he was so ashamed that he fled down the stairs. Sobbing, he crawled into a dark corner. Yep, looks like Paul doesn't want to get even anymore. Nope, nope, nope. 
The Care Bears heard Paul and tried to get to him, but Coldheart saw them coming. He quickly set traps to confuse them. They were tricked by mirrors and fake walls and trap doors. Grumpy Bear complained, I'd sure like to find out where we're going. But just then, the sound of Paul's sobbing grew louder and the Care Bears turned a corner and found him. Paul, said Tender Heart Bear. What's wrong? Cold Heart has frozen two baby bears, Paul explained, and he's going to freeze all the kids in town. I didn't want that to happen, but now it's too late to stop him. Tender Heart said gently, It's never too late if you care enough. Grumpy Bear frowned. Huh, I don't think he cares enough. I do, I do care enough shouted Paul. Follow me. All the Care Bears and Paul raced around every trap and finally reached the laboratory. You're too late, Fuzzy Wuzzies. Every child in town is frozen solid, just like these two, said Cold Heart, pointing to baby tugs and baby hugs. There's nothing you can do to melt them. Oh, I don't know about that, Professor. The Care Bears began to whisper among themselves. Then they, then they all lined up and Friend Bear announced, It's time for the Care Bear Stare. The Care Bear Stare, cackled Professor Coldheart. Not this time. You're too late. You're wrong, said Paul. It's never too late if you care enough. The Care Bears all turned toward the contraption. Tenderheart Bear gave the order. Care Bears, stare! All the Care Bears love and caring fed into the careless ray contraption and turned it into a rainbow maker. Beautiful beams shot out and melted every frozen child in the town. Even the block of ice trapping baby hugs and tugs melted. Professor Coldheart stamped his feet and shouted, Drat! You've won again, Care Bears, but I'll get even next time. Trying to get even only adds to the problem, said Paul. Take it from me. I can see that Paul has learned his lesson, said Cheer Bear. It's time for us to head back to Carolot. There are others who will need our help. As the Care Bears mounted their cloud cars, Paul stood and waved. Then, he started to walk toward the playground where the other toward the schoolyard where the other kids were playing. It was time to start making some new friends. The end. Remember, if someone does something horrible to you, don't try to get even with them. That only adds to the problem. It never makes anything better. Why, there's even a verse about getting even. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. 1 Peter 3, 9. So remember, don't try to get even with someone who has wronged you, but instead repay their evil with a blessing. See you later. Bye.